Scientists have raised an alarm over the rising pollution levels in Lake Victoria, which are contributing to recurring fish deaths across the lake. In findings published by the Kenya Marine and Fisheries Research Institute, the presence of oil layers in part of the lake and a high concentration of ammonium and nitrates have shown evidence of the discharge of toxic effluent into the freshwater body. As we'll hear now from Laura Otieno, the findings have renewed calls for strict enforcement of existing environmental protection frameworks. The calm waters of Lake Victoria. This has been a source of livelihood for thousands across East Africa over the years. But a wave of death swept in between 2023 and 2025 as cage fish farmers operating in Lake Victoria recorded losses running into an estimated 3 billion shillings. Massive fish deaths that swept across the lake left a trail of loss and farmers from Kisumu and Busia counties were the hardest hit. Initial investigations linked the deaths to upwelling a natural process where deep water with low dissolved oxygen rises to the surface, suffocating fish. The phenomenon forcing farmers to be extra vigilant with aquaculture processes. What we can do better, and we did it last month, uh, around October, when, it, when we had the fish kills, is placing our cages in the right spots. We used to have our cages close to the shore. And that was a challenge that we, us as farmers, we brought to ourselves. But now as we speak where we are, this is a very good spot. And uh, this one was recommended by the authorities. New findings now show that pollution also played a role, causing the death of fish even outside the cages. The Kenya Aquatica Journal, published by Kemfrey, showing that water samples collected between November 2024 and January 2025 had elevated levels of phosphorus and nitrogen. Researchers say these pollutants that were collected from three points, including the river Kisat, likely came from surface runoff, sediment disturbance, untreated sewage and industrial discharge, a running problem exacerbated by the lake's proximity to major urban centers. The entirety of Kisumu is contributing about 7,000 tons per year of phosphorus and may be followed by Siaya. Siaya would be because of increased uh, discharge from rivers, that uh, we have major rivers from that side, on the, on the Siaya side. And maybe we are talking about uh, um, uh, industrial, town, industrial towns like, uh, like uh, Kakamega, like um, Webuye, that are having some of these major factories. For lakeside communities, the impact of the effluent flowing into their source of livelihood is visible and worrying. You find the water turning into something duckish. We want to stop this. I want to call upon the people around this river to be very vigilant and be reporting immediately they see any coloration that is not normal of the river. That will help us as environmentalists in following up on the real source of this pollutant that is now actually exposing these people to... To, to economic sabotage. Lake Victoria is a transboundary resource shared by Kenya, Uganda and Tanzania and is protected by national laws as well as regional agreements. Kenya imposes fines of up to 4 million Kenya shillings for discharging toxic waste into water bodies. Uganda, on the other hand, finds offenders up to $1.6 million for large-scale hazardous discharges, while Tanzania sets a minimum penalty of $7,200. Environmental groups are now pushing for coordinated cross-border enforcement as well as community sensitization in order to curb pollution. Waste does not create itself. It's people who create it. And therefore, and it's not only confined to the city or to a county setup, this is even in rural setting. I mean, All these practices, ideas, uh, decisions need to be localized so that we can have sessions even with the local chiefs. 
Kenya's penalties stem from the Environmental Management and Coordination Act developed after the country signed the Bamako Convention in 1991. The convention aims to protect Africa from hazardous waste. Kenya deposited its instruments of ratification in 2025. Researchers say the latest findings strengthen the case for stricter enforcement of the Bamako Convention. There's an internal part of this, con this convention that is really, really important. It talks about the management of waste and not spilling waste on inland waterways, right? Because if you spill waste into Lake Victoria in Kisumu, it will end up in Entebbe, it will end up in Mwanza, it will impact all those state parties that that maybe they don't even know that you're spewing this chemical into, into, into Lake Victoria. But the question is, how do we prevent the waste from even getting to the rivers in the first point? With research now linking pollution to economic losses and long-term environmental damage, scientists and activists are urging greater public vigilance. For now, protecting Lake Victoria is not just about enforcement, but also safeguarding livelihoods and preserving one of Africa's most important natural resources. Laura Otieno, Citizen TV.